Hello, everybody. Thanks, uh, Hannes and Eugenia, for organizing this conference and for inviting me to speak here. Since uh, Hannes concluded his presentation with a koan, I decided to begin mine with a dance quotation from the High Master Bodhidharma, which uh, looks like a koan. Ichigai go yo, kekka jinen zo. Eine Blume entfaltet fünf Blätter und trägt Früchte, die von selbst so hervorgehen. A flower is five petal openings. Effects naturally are realized. One blossom opens five petals. Fruit form naturally. Un fiore si chiude in cinque petali e da frutti naturalmente. This is the opening line of Kuga, of the Kuga chapter of Dogen Shobogenzo, which appeared for the first time in 2043. My purpose in this presentation today is to analyze and discuss this image of how a flower opens up and falls away. I am especially interested in the idea that this process of coming to be and choosing to be contains within it every single detail of the entire world. The flower expresses the whole world through its uh, non dual merging relationality. In this sense, the term relationality addressed at the same time both the radical interdependence and the absolute self sufficiency of the flower and the world, and really of all existence. And the flower blooms in the world while simultaneously the world blooms in the flower. Or, in other words, as an even more radical image, we can say that the fish swims in the water, and yet at the same time, the water swims in the fish. The bird flies in the sky, and yet at the same time, the sky flies in the bird, and so on. Since time is limited, I will take for granted some basic information about the context of Darwin Sobogenzo, but we can discuss this context later in the Q&A session. I listened uh, many different translations in German, English, and Italian in order to demonstrate that uh, philosophical language reaches its highest potential when we compare the difference in meaning of these translations. I will emphasize this uh, point again at the end of the presentation. For the most part of my textual analysis is based on the German translation by Rolf Elberfeld and Joske Ohashi, on the Japanese translation by Okubo Dosu, on the Italian translation by Aldo Tonlini, and on two different English translations. One from uh, Kazuo Tanahashi and the other from Budova Mitsugima and Todo Pro. What follows? In what follow, I will first unpack my conception of the verb to marriage, as well as the philosophical significance behind the term non-duality and relationality, with uh, respect to the general interpretation of the chapter. My aim is also to highlight this term and draw out their meaning on the basis of one dense passage of Kuga. Finally, I will focus on the different meanings contained in the title of the chapter as a way to demonstrate once again, the relational unity of the flower and the world. In order to address the link between philosophy and mysticism, I chose this chapter because according to Ohasi, Kuga represents an intermediate typology of dog and style of writing. This uh, textual topology consists in three main features. First, instructions for practical exercise in this is the first example, the practice of seeing. The second, the profound speculative reflection. In this case, the tension between emptiness and reality, between the dull and the colorful, and so on. And third, concrete elements, such as flowers, trees, celestial bodies, eyes, and so on. The significance of this empty flower lies not so much in the fact that it is mysteriously empty, not that it is, nor that it is uh, placed in the sky or placed generally in space, but instead in the fact that it is concrete, 
and that uh, due to this concreteness, it exhibits the singularity of things of each single peach, apricot, plum, and willow flower, from which, according to Dogan, the entire world is expressing. It is from the term of this um, concreteness that Kim Gijin addressed Dogen as a realistic mystic. To such concreteness, Dogen seeks to explain the Buddhist doctrine that describe how the master before him takes deep inspiration from nature, for example, to trees and stones, which are already enlightened. This is the reason why nature has to be read and talked like a sutra. The empty flower is therefore not a romantic metaphor, alluding the emptiness of as ultimate revelation of the principle of Buddhist enlightenment. Instead, it is the positioning of the concrete experience of a flower, which along with mountains and rivers, Buddhist masters are able to see their own body-mind changing as a reflection of the world universe, as a reflection which is now opening, now falling, now blooming, now withering in this one flower. An um, important aspect of this philosophical vision can be expressed through the term merge. A uh, term doesn't exist in self, but not mentioned explicitly, but which is very pertinent to his soul. Dogen does not go beyond the real world into a pure fantasy or mystical world, but instead merge the natural and supernatural into one immanent manifestation of nature as the full manifestation of enlightenment. Consequently, the human is not, not the only who can achieve enlightenment. The whole world is already enlightened. Moreover, the whole world is constantly in the process of putting enlightenment into practice so as to actualize it. In some of the richest and densest passages of Fugen, Dogen determines why this Buddhist doctrine should not stop at the proclamation of the emptiness and illusoriness of worldly manifestations, but should instead go beyond this empty and partially deteriorating view of reality, or better should return back from emptiness. At the core of the doctrine is the idea that we reach the concreteness of reality only through the recognition of concrete circumstances. Body. We should not insist or persist in emptiness, much like contemplating an empty flower as it floats in the sky, and thereby discard the material reality as illusory, while at the same time claim that true reality exists somewhere else somewhere outside the concrete. According to Dogen's reverse causality is such emptiness, the real cause of clouded vision. This is the reason why Dogen likens the enlightenment to an eye disease causing clouded vision. The enlightenment is similar to the view we get from looking at empty flower or flower in the sky, which is a common metaphor for illusion. In addition to this, uh, Dogen goes a step further by defining the experience of such illusory vision, perhaps as the liberation from the malaise of this type of vision, as a further disease related to the initial disease of florid vision. Everything that exists, that shines, that uh, manifests itself, is the uh, realization, genjo, of uh, formless emptiness in its most concrete form. The formless emptiness of the concrete is for dog in a dynamic form. In order to practice seeing and to grasp it in a bodily way, we should empty the form of reality, such as the form of flowers of emptiness, um, to, and then furthermore, such, uh, sorry, such um, as with the form of the plum flower, and then furthermore, empty out, even this emptying out of reality, such as with the vision of the flower of emptiness. To empty the emptiness does not mean to fill it up with previous reality once again, but rather to open up, like a flower open up, the concrete manifestation of emptiness 
to the intrinsic, um, intrinsic plurality of the world in all its details. This is um, the way to conceive of emptiness and uh, fullness as non-oppositional. Their unity fructifies reality. This non-dual merging relationality is how we conceive of the flower as holding the entire world within us, or in Dogen's work, Kekai Sekai Ki. When Anne Blüter öffnet, she bells her for this. The opening of flowers is the occurrence of the world. The opening, the opening of blossom raised the world. Studendo il fiore, forge questo mondo. Dogen explores the relation between the empty flower in the sky and other elements of the world, such as the plum, apricot, willow, and peach flowers, and such as the observing eye, the earth, the water, and fire. Near the beginning of the chapter, Dogen discussed the famous example of a blue lotus flower, which in Buddhism represents the true beauty of all beings. Dogen asks the reader or listener uh, to not doubt that the blue lotus flower opens up in the water, even if we learn, we have learned that it actually opens up in the fire. Dogen's point here applies as well to the empty flower in the sky, which, as the word say, seems to belong intrinsically to the sky, but in fact emerge from the sky as well as from the earth, even though, even though few recognize it. We can see many of the same ideas that I outlined under the concept of merge, non-duality, and relationality, show through a longer passage I will now quote. Incidentally, I have written down both, written down, uh, both of the two English translations in order to emphasize some of the nodal points of, uh, in the discourse and the um, uh, relatively interesting variation on the translation. However, uh, because time is limited, I will only read from the Tanahashi translation. Mediocre scholars today only see that the flowers in the sky should be discarded. They don't know the great matter after the flower in the sky, or the seeing, blooming, and falling of the flower in the sky. The scholar are merely regards where the atmosphere is as the sky, and where the sun, the moon, and the stars hang as the sky. So they assume that the so-called flowers in the sky change colors, float in the air like clouds, move toward east and west, up and down, blow in the wind. They only think that flowers in the sky exist due to obscured eyes. And they do not realize that flowers in the sky cause obscured eyes. Know that a person with obscured eyes in the Buddha way is a person of original enlightenment, of wondrous enlightenment, of all the Buddhas, of the three realms of Buddha going beyond Buddha. Do not misunderstand that obscuring is illusion. Do not think that there is reality other than that. Such a point is a lesser view. If obscurity and flowers in the sky are illusion, a view such as to create and be created is also illusion. If everything is illusion, truth cannot be established. If there is no truth to be established, the point that obscurity and flowers in the sky are illusion cannot be established. In this passage from the Kuga, we notice a multi-sided merging. The cloudedness of the view, the truth is that the person of obscure eye and Buddha all merge together with the consequence that no distinction is able to hold. We notice the non-duality of the celestial bodies and of the sky and space in which they move. And we also notice finally the relationality that follows on the one hand, from the impossibility of establishing truth as well as illusion, but also, on the other hand, from the rejection of attachment itself. This rejection of the attachment itself, of the uh, attachment, is a reflection 
even of the understanding of emptiness, a rejection even of the understanding of emptiness as the background of the manifestation, for example, of celestial bodies and colorful flowers. Dogen's foreground is relationality from the very first line of the text by using the body dharma as a mouthpiece to express how the flower opens up, opens up and naturally bears fruit. Only by way of artifice is possible to keep the concept of flower separate from the concept of uh, fruit. We already saw Ikigai go yo kekatinento. One blossom opens five petals to its form naturally. The empty flower that gives the title to the chapter of the Shabuganza actually invites, uh, invites us to move away from it, to detach from it, and to get closer instead to the intrinsic plurality of concrete reality. It is in this sense that Dogen, through the thematization of the flower, presents a phenomenology or better a phenopraxis uh, of the entire world. Dogen emphasized that. Um, this intrinsic plurality of, um, of um, uh, sorry, Dogen emphasized this intrinsic plurality of reality through its use of language in its various dispositions. As we can see when we compare two English translations of the dance passage I quoted above, very different stories can be told and very different association and combination told. Depending on the nuance of the original text and how it is enhanced and developed in the translation. Nevertheless, although the story appears condensed in the original text, we can clearly distinguish them based on the different translations. It is possible directly from the title of the chapter to highlight, to highlight the myriad of meaning of the story produced from the original as well as the translation. This possibility comes about uh, because the expression Kuge already contains different nuances and various combinations. First of all, in this synergetic expression, there is no indication of the singular and plural distinction. Because of this, we do, we do not know if Dogen is referring to many flowers or only one flower, maybe a singular tantum, so one for all, or really one flower. The same ambiguity applies to skies and spaces. Kuge is composed of two Japanese kanji. The second character can mean blossom, blüte, bocciolo, or flower, blume, fiore. While the first translates as sky, as open space, or as the equivalent of the Sanskrit sunyata, emptiness a term well known in Buddhist context. The combination of the two characters together can be translated in various ways, as I have indicated throughout uh, this presentation. Elberfeld Ohasi translates uh, Kuge as empty blossom, leere blüte, and sometimes as empty flower, uh, empty flower of the sky, leere himmelsblume. In contrast, Tolini, Translate Kuga as the plural flowers of the sky, Fiori del Cielo. Um, however, in a footnote attached to the title, he lists a second possible translation as flowers of emptiness, Fiori del Vuoto. And actually, he suggests that uh, the reader keeps this uh, double nuance in mind while reading. Some have to translate Kuga as flower in the sky, sometimes with a nuance of flower of the sky while Lissiti Macross translates Kuga as a flower in space. We conclude from the various possible connotations of this translation that the emptiness of the flower does not refer to the absence of features, uh, of features in the flower in the same way that the space of Ku does not indicate some kind of containing space which seems to be completely empty, and for this reason can be filled up with the words in all of its details. Um, space for Dogen is not a container, but rather an existentially lived dimension of realization and transformation. All of these translations are equally correct, 
or equally incorrect, <laughs> even though they tell different stories by emphasizing one or another aspect contained in the original expression mm, only in one. Similarly, Dogen also tells many stories at the same time. To say this is not to underestimate the content of its philosophy due to the lack, the lack of precision, because its work offers a polyphony of meaning. Of meaning. He requires that his readers follow different articulation and sound at the same time. Sounds which could perfectly subsist um, as a melody without the other. We can debate uh, whether this symphonic metaphor is appropriate for what Dogen's attempt to express, but interestingly, rather than creating confusion, this polyphony clearly specifies that uh, the context of Dogen's discourse and even makes it unique so that he actively performs in his text what he attempts to explain in it. This kind of clarity and uniqueness does not simply follow a linear and statistic in depth logic that qualifies by meticulously excluding what does not belong in the context and thus reduce the scope of the treatment Instead, uh, Dogen's clarity comes from the constellation of differences held together as one type of knowledge. It is precisely because of this kind of clarity that um, knowledge for Dogen can only be practical bodily, also in the case of language and dynamics. In other words, the clarity of knowledge in Dogen's work is never achieved but is constantly practiced, actualized, realized, so that the flower of emptiness open up and fall away and naturally unfold as the world. Thanks for listening to my presentation.